Hello, and welcome to SAS Power's Boundary Dam Power Station in Estevan, Saskatchewan, Canada. Boundary Dam is the site of one of the world's first and largest commercial carbon capture and storage, or CCS, processes on a coal-fired power plant. Thank you for taking this virtual tour in what is Canada's sunniest city. The tour gives you the freedom to explore the plant, opened in 1959, or the brand new CCS facility that became operational in 2014. Boundary Dam Power Station was built in stages, starting in 1955. The plant contains a total of six coal-fired units, two of which are retired. The remaining four produce approximately 750 megawatts. It is Sask Power's largest generating plant. The station is beside the Boundary Reservoir and uses its water as coolant. That's why the reservoir is the only Saskatchewan body of water that does not freeze in winter and why it is recognized as one of the best bass fishing spots in Canada. 300 employees operate and maintain the station 365 days a year. Unit 3 alone consumes over 800,000 tons of coal annually. Canadian federal regulations limit the amount of carbon dioxide that can be released from a coal-fired unit that is reaching the end of its useful life, or 50 years of age. With Boundary Dam's Unit 3 reaching that mark, it was the perfect candidate for carbon capture. Unit 3 has been retrofitted with carbon capture technology and the turbine has been replaced. This will prolong its useful life by decades, allowing SASC Power to capture up to 90% of all greenhouse gases that come from this unit. Just in terms of carbon dioxide, it's the equivalent of taking 250,000 vehicles off the road every year. That's how SASC Power can continue to produce affordable electricity from coal, but in a way that minimizes our impact on the environment. Rebuilding Unit 3 also meant upgrading its control room. Notice on the right-hand side the traditional setup for the controls for Boundary Dam's Unit 4, and on the left, the highly modern controls to operate the CCS-equipped Unit 3. Building on the lessons learned here, SAS Power's concept can be applicable on the majority of coal-fired power stations around the world. That's a positive step in making coal sustainable for the future. This world first also meant hundreds of hours of training for SAS Power's highly skilled operators. The ducting that you see attached to Unit 3 is what connects the refurbished power plant to the newly built carbon capture facility. This sends flue gas off to have its carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide removed and repurposed. Construction of the carbon capture facility began in 2011, after extensive feasibility studies. It came online in 2014. In total, it took more than 1,700 workers and more than 4.5 million hours of work to complete this first-of-its-kind project. That's almost half the hours of work that went into building the CN Tower in Toronto back in 1975, a building that stood as the world's tallest for decades. Operators are trained in a high-tech simulator on site, which allows them to be fully ready to safely operate this first of its kind. How does it work? Let us show you how we capture carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide. Following the absorption of sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide from the flue gas with two different amine solutions, the one with carbon dioxide is sent to the massive CO2 stripper. This is where the CO2 is released from the amine in a gaseous form. A variety of major components are used to complete this complicated process. Let us start by showing you the absorbers. The absorber towers allow flue gas to enter and react with the amine solvent. When the flue gas makes contact with amine, sulfur dioxide is first absorbed and the flue gas continues to flow to the second carbon dioxide absorber where a different amine absorbs the CO2. From the exterior, you will see the two absorber towers connected side by side. To ensure the concrete walls won't degrade over time, 70,000 ceramic tiles were used inside the absorber. Ceramic tile is so durable, it's also used on space shuttles to protect the vessel from burning upon re-entry into the atmosphere. 
From there, heat exchangers are used within the facility to heat up the amine before it is sent to the strippers. In this facility, the world's largest available plate-type heat exchangers were installed to assist with the large amount of flue gas. The carbon dioxide stripper is a cylinder with a large surface area where the amine has further heat added, and the CO2 is completely separated from it. The CO2 is then released and delivered through pipes to a smaller building next door for compression. With the CO2 removed, the amine is then sent through a complex filtration system that removes contaminants and recycles the liquid solution. The amine can then be sent back through the system for another round, much like how a pool's filtration system works. The pure carbon dioxide gas must now be dealt with and prepared for transportation so that it doesn't enter our atmosphere. The CO2 is sent to a compression system that takes it from a gaseous state and brings it to a pressure level of 2,500 pounds per square inch. That's about 75 times the pressure of a car tire. This compresses the carbon dioxide into a liquid-like state, which is perfect for transportation via pipeline. The carbon dioxide pipeline leaves the CCS facility and goes deep underground in one of two ways. It can either be sold to the oil industry or stored in a deep saline reservoir off-site. The oil industry uses the CO2 in a process called enhanced oil recovery. This helps increase productivity in oil wells, but also keeps the carbon dioxide underground once operations finish in a specific oil field. It can also be sent to SAS Power's Carbon Storage and Research Centre, which hosts AquaStore, where it is sent into a deep porous rock formation, permanently and safely, 3.4 kilometres underground. That's the equivalent of almost nine Empire State Buildings stacked on top of each other. The injection well and underground storage are then continually monitored, as are all parts of the CO2 pipeline coming out of the Boundary Dam CCS facility. Once the flue gas from the power plant is cooled, the amine solution absorbs the sulfur dioxide molecules from the gas and brings them to a stripper. The stripper removes the sulfur dioxide from the amine solution, and the amine is sent to a complex filtration system so it can be reused in the process once again. Similar components are also used and outlined in the carbon dioxide process. After the stripper separates the sulfur dioxide gas, it's sent to an acid plant housed within the CCS facility. This sulfuric acid plant is the first of its kind to have been installed within a carbon capture facility. Its job is to transform the sulfur dioxide gas into commercial grade sulfuric acid that is roughly 94% pure. The acid plant will produce approximately 16,000 litres of liquid sulfuric acid every day or about one and a half tanker trucks daily. This acid is used for industrial purposes, such as fertilizer or other things like filtration systems, chemistry labs, detergents, pest control, and much more. Thank you for visiting SAS Power's Boundary Dam Power Station, the world's first commercial post-combustion CCS project on a coal-fired plant. <laughs>